My name is David Lobenberg, and I'm known for my California Vibe watercolor portraits. They're done with bright and expressive colors, but on this portrait, I'm going to start with muddy colors and then later on add some oomph with some bright colors. So as you can see, I'm starting out with a rather dirty palette. Haven't cleaned it and I'm planning on just using all those colors from a previous painting. I'm painting with one of my favorite brushes. I like to use the cat's tongue. Uh, sometimes it's called an oval brush. Starts out very wide at the ferrule and then comes to a nice point. So you can lay down, you can push on it, lay down some broad washes or go very lightly and just use the point for finer washes, especially lines. You'll see me do this throughout the painting. I often like to dance my brush, move it around different directions. It gives the painting, it gives my washes extra energy. I'm painting both the left side and the right side of this female subject. Basically, I'm framing her face and I'm leaving lots of the white of the paper. And the white of the paper corresponds to the very lightest areas where the most light is reflecting off of her skin. I'm scrupulously following the values that I see in my reference photograph. That's very important. As you can see, these are pretty subdued colors. I like to call them muddy colors. Later on, I'll pop in some bright colors, but I'm not there yet. I'm constantly dipping my brush into water so that it's always saturated. You don't want your brush to dry out. And if you look at that wash I put underneath her jawline across her neck, you can still see that it's not dry yet and uh, you can see quite a reflection. Oh, I love doing this. Now I'm using a water spritzer just to get some areas of softness. I like to work areas that are soft against other areas that are harder, that have harder edges. This really gives the painting that extra, I think, moodiness. Now I'm dipping into pure cadmium red and opera. These are nice bright colors 
and this is the beginning of me combining muddy colors and accenting those muddy colors with bright colors. So from now on, you'll see me go back and forth. Mud, bright pure colors, mud, bright pure colors. This stage I'm working with smaller wash areas, so I just picked up a smaller traditional round watercolor brush. And I'll probably switch from that to another brush later on. You'll see. I am always, always careful to look up my reference photograph, or if I were working live, I'd, work up, I'd look at my subject constantly to make sure that I'm following the values that I see. So on this lower lip, I'm adding those same bright reds and oranges and opera red color, but there's more water, so it's a lighter value because most of the time, light hits the lower lip a lot more than the upper lip, and you get reflected color, so your values are not as deep. Some red hues in the eyes now. And you'll see I'll start to distribute these bright colors about the face. In fact, I'll distribute several colors about the entire portrait and that creates what is called color unity. Okay, here's where I transition to a third type of brush, a flat watercolor brush. I often like to use flats to get more of a kind of hard-edged, carved look, almost like a knife whittling on a piece of wood. I like that effect. A quick change from the flat back to the cat's tongue or oval brush. So depending on what type of uh, styling I want, I'm working with four, count them, four brushes. This one is called a liner brush. The brush is real fat where it joins the ferrule and that holds water that feeds to a really thin part at the very top. And that way you can get nice, long, thin lines like I did with her hair on the right side. And back to the flat brush as you can see here. Boy, I'm going back and forth quite a bit. Time to spritz, soften up that area around the cheek. Beautiful.
still carving with my flat watercolor brush. Punch of bright colors on her chin, reds and oranges. Notice how I'm directing the the flood, the wash when I use the sprayer. Notice the motion, the downward motion. Pretty cool thing that you can do with that sprayer as far as controlling the flood, which is my, def my favorite definition of the process of watercoloring. Oh boy, that was a bold move. I like doing that. You can see me, I'm carefully molding the face in terms of how the values work that I see in the reference photograph. This is very important, but the key here is not to overpaint. That's always a difficult thing with us watercolorists, because once you've overpaint, it's hard to change that. Here I'm popping in some, it's real thick paint, it's turquoise, just to give it that extra punch. We've got punches of reds and oranges, and now turquoise, and I'll distribute that turquoise color, the same as the reds, throughout the entire painting for color unity. I'm separating the upper and lower lip a little more dramatically by adding where they meet a darker value of color. It works all the time. And here I'm doing the same thing with a darker color right underneath her chin. It just gives that area a little more dramatic dimension. Contrasting darks and lights create dramatic dimension. With the last water spritz, I finish the painting. Here are the colors I've used and the basic three brushes. A liner brush, a flat brush, and a cat's tongue. And my muddy, muddy painting palette. And last but not least, my signature. Hey, 
Hey, if you like this video, please click that little subscribe button on the right hand corner so you can see more upcoming watercolor painting demos.